in Europe because, uh, you know, they're cool in the summer, they're, you know, warm in the winter, and they're incredibly cheap to build. And of course today you can study Neanderthal culture. They had language, art, music. They were religious. They buried their dead with religious artifacts and graves and so forth. They were absolutely, totally, 100% human. Even the DNA proves that they're human. So uh, the Stone Age is just nothing but the people who left the Tower of Babel and migrated to Europe and lived there for a couple hundred years establishing civilization. And dinosaurs lived recently. You know, when I was growing up at Berkeley, they told me dinosaurs haven't existed 65, 70 million years. They all became extinct. That a human being never saw a dinosaur. When I was an evolutionist, I believed that. I don't anymore. You see, when you go to these natural history museums, they show you all these fossils of dinosaurs and dioramas and so forth. They tell you, oh, you know, they've been dead for 65, 70 million years. I don't think so anymore. For example, how many of you know, 1990, we found dinosaur blood cells in a T-Rex bone and the hemoglobin was still in the blood cells. You don't believe me? This is an actual photograph of dinosaur blood cells in a T-Rex bone found in 1990 in Montana by the evolutionist paleontologist Dr. Mary Schweitzer. Now Dr. Mary Schweitzer is an incredibly intelligent woman, unfortunately still an evolutionist, but she's a very talented paleontologist, a very intelligent woman. And in 1990, now she's a bone digger. She likes to dig bones. And she really likes to dig up T-Rex bones. And you only dig up T-Rex bones in Montana. So she's working at Montana State University Northern Campus in 1990. She's out digging up T-Rex bones and she finds blood cells inside. Well, obviously this discovery refuted evolution. Is that correct? I mean, I don't know about a problem that I have. I have a big problem with blood cells lasting 65, 68 million years in the ground. How about you? You know? Well, when she found this contradiction to evolution, the university wanted to reward her, so they fired her. <clears throat> but being a very resourceful, very intelligent woman, um, she got a job at a actually better university. It was kind of like being kicked upstairs. She got a job with North Carolina State University. In March of 2005, she's back in Montana digging up T-Rex bones, because that's what she really likes to do, and she found this, dinosaur flesh. This is real, fresh dinosaur flesh. It was soft, moist, resilient. You could squeeze the blood out of it. This little ligament right here was still elastic. You could pull it apart and it would snap back together. This is a blood vessel. These are blood cells. She is asking this question. How could these cells last for 65 million years? I think she's asking the wrong question. I think the question she should be asking is, are they 65 million years old? And in Spain, reported by the National Geographic magazine, well, this is 2006. We found supposedly 10 million year old frog and salamander fossils, but inside we found fresh bone marrow. Again, I have a problem believing that bone marrow could live and you know, exist in the ground for 10 million years. You know? And we have found what are called living index or key fossils. Now, let me explain something, folks. I said earlier, Evolutionists do not use radiometric dating processes to date anything because they all have five false assumptions, seven false assumptions, none of them work, correct? So how do evolutionists date these layers that are in the ground? They don't use these modern scientific techniques because they don't work. This is actually how they do it. They tell us how old the rock layer is by the fossil you find in it. Then they tell you how old the fossil is by the rock layer you found it in. Should I repeat myself? They tell us how old the rock is by the fossil you find in it. Then they tell you how old the fossil is by the rock you found it in. Everybody with me? And these fossils are called key or index fossils. Now, the problem is we find them alive today. For example, the coelacanth fish, the lobed fin fish that's so ugly only a mother would love it, supposedly extinct for 70 million years. A hundred million supposed years ago, this is the fish that supposedly evolved into the amphibians and then became extinct itself 70 million years ago, after it evolved into the amphibians. Or the Neopelina, a mollusk supposedly extinct for 280 million years. Or 
The lingula, a brachiopod, supposedly extinct for 400 million years. Or the taro branch, supposedly extinct for 300 million years, have all been found alive recently. The coelacanth was found alive in December of 1938 in the Comoros Islands, north of Madagascar, east of Africa. Um, but they were found alive in December of 1938. They have never changed. They look exactly like fossils that are supposed to be over 300 million years old. They've never changed, and they're still alive. Now, if they're alive and they've never changed, is it possible that they could have evolved into the amphibians? Well, that's a stretch. And exactly 60 years later, in 1998, we found another population of coelacanths alive off the coast of Indonesia, 5,000 miles away from the first population. Evolutionists are starting to say, well, you know, they're not extinct, and maybe they're a lot more common than we thought they used to be, you know? Well, all of these have been found alive recently. Now let's think about this and kind of wrapping things up. We have evidence that the Earth and the universe cannot be old. It doesn't matter whether you look in the Earth, on the Earth, we have more than enough evidence to convict. Doesn't matter whether you look near the Earth, in the solar system, in the galaxy, across the universe, we have more than enough evidence to prove it is all young, perfectly consistent with 6,000 years of age. Now, let's be good scientists. Let's take a look at the sheer weight of evidence. Now, evolutionists have five major arguments in which they suggest it may be billions of years old, but there's not one ounce of proof that it is old. Do you understand me? Evolutionists have not one proof that is undeniable that it is old. They only have five major arguments to suggest it might be old. We have over 200 arguments to suggest and prove it is young, okay? So they have five arguments that suggest it might be old. We have over 200 arguments that prove it's young. Now let's just be good scientists. Now they have only five major arguments that, well, suggest it might be old. We have over 200 proofs that it is young. Now just being a good scientist, sheer weight of evidence, which one of those two would you go with? Well, I think young is the only reasonable scientific answer, is that correct? Now, Sir Charles Lyell, the evolutionist who was the mentor of Charles Darwin, wrote a set of four books starting in 1830 to 1837 called Principles of Geology, Volumes 1, 2, 3, 4. And these are the basic books that are the foundation of all evolutionary geology today. He is the man most responsible for the expression, the present is the key of the past. Now evolutionists believe in what is called uniformitarianism. Uniformitarianism means this, it's the belief, the faith belief, that all the natural laws, all the natural principles, everything has acted uniformly in exactly the same way for an eternity past. So an evolutionist believes in uniformitarianism. It is the belief that all the natural laws, all the natural processes have acted uniformly throughout an eternal past, and that only random chance working through eternal mass, energy, and time have produced all the complexity we see in the universe today. Now here's my last comment to you folks. If Charles Lyell, this great evolutionist, is correct, if the present is the key to the past, then it all has to be young and cannot be old. Thank you.